I see that there are some young people here in our assembly. And I wonder how many of us as adults ask our kids and our grandkids, what do you want to be when you grow up? As youngsters, we probably heard that question often asked of us. It's a question that is not necessarily, necessarily limited to any particular age group. And while it's a very common question, it's not necessarily a simple one. There are still some people at the age of 40 and 50 years of age who are still trying to answer the question. Those of us older folks perhaps often say, I should have been an architect, or I should have been a painter, or I should have been a musician, or I should have been a surgeon, or I should have been an actor with paparazzi, with the adoring fans. And of course, all of those are my own silly fantasies. Yet any and all answers to the question, what do you want to be when you grow up, points to the mindset that says that we are the ones who are responsible for creating whatever kind of life we want. So that if you quickly glance over the panorama of your relationships, of your friendships, of your family, of your job, of your education and home, all of those have been attempts to create our very own life. And you know there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. The difficulty comes in when we start to believe and when we carry within ourselves the responsibility that we are the ultimate creators of our own lives. And that is why we are always being reminded in the scriptures that God is the builder and the ultimate creator of life and that that's the way it's been since the very beginning. In the opening pages of the Bible, in the book of Genesis, we read, in the beginning, God spoke and creation came into being. God said, let there be light, and there was light. Let there be sky, let there be land and earth and fish and beasts. Let there be sun and moon and stars, and it happened. Let us create man and woman in our image and likeness, and so it was. God said, let there be, and so it happened. So that maybe creation is the context of this particular gospel passage that was just proclaimed to us, the gospel passage of the Annunciation by the angel Gabriel to Mary. Perhaps today's gospel text, the Annunciation by the angel, is all about creation. Again, in Luke's Annunciation story, God speaks the creative word. Yet how interesting that at the Annunciation, it is Mary who says, let it be. Let it be done unto me according to your word. So that Mary's exclamation, let it be, echoes the very words of God, let there be. It's an ongoing call and response between God and humanity. God prays creation into existence, and Mary's let it be becomes the initiation of a new creation. This is not the ending of the creation story in Genesis, but perhaps here at the Annunciation, it is the continuation and the beginning of our salvation. 
so that when God's word says, let there be his words bring creation into being. And when Mary says, let it be, her words bring birth, bring forth the creator into our midst. So that it is through her, let it be, that Jesus is, ta is able to take on human flesh. And the birthing of Christ, becoming one of us, is not only limited to Mary. The Annunciation to the Blessed Virgin Mary is the affirmation of the goodness of all of humanity and the goodness of all of creation. God chooses to become one of us and to make his abode among us so that each one of us, sons and daughters of Mary, can proudly carry the title highly favored ones for every one of us is called to grow up carrying the life of God within our own humanity. Mary is part of each one of us, and she is the part of us that gives birth to the Christ in our world. So that to love and to honor our mother Mary is to discover the life that God is creating in us, who we are to be when we grow up. And it is Mary who teaches us how to say yes to our God. And so today, each one of us here who, are, who, are, who is here to celebrate the feast day of the Blessed Mother, each one of us is called to give voice to Mary's words, let it be, to accept the invitation to be inviting and vulnerable and trusting and receptive and open. It means a letting down and a letting go of all of the things that, say, that tend to separate us from God and from one another. Reading the text a couple of times, I found it interesting that even Mary sees her virginity as a roadblock, as a sort of separation from the accomplishment of God's plan when she asks, how can this be? How will it happen if I am still a virgin? Yet nothing will ever be able to separate God from humanity. And as the angel Gabriel boldly and proudly announces, nothing will be impossible with God. We all live with hindrances that separate us from God. We have spoken about all of these during these nine days of the Novena. Fear, shame, guilt, prejudice, grief, stresses, ailments, isolation. Perhaps even the very lives that we have created for ourselves might tend to separate us from the divine. But God looks through all of our hindrances, all of our walls, all of our confusions, all of our masks, all of our masquerades, and still sees us as his highly favored ones, even when we cannot see ourselves in that same way. God's words of possibility speak across all of our separations announcing that God is with us and that we can conceive within ourselves God's own very life. God is always stepping through whatever might separate us into realizing that we have been chosen to be God's special dwelling place. With Mary's words, how can this be? Mary acknowledges that the life Gabriel announces is not the life that she was creating for herself. 
and with her words, let it be done unto me, Mary receives the life that God is creating in her. Between how can this be and let it be, the impossible becomes real. The never before heard of will forever be proclaimed and the barriers between humanity and divinity fall. So let us offer whatever excuses, fears, reasons, and barriers we might have as to why, why God dwelling within us cannot be real and true for us. And it is the angel Gabriel who will tell us differently and say, nothing will be impossible with God. And so my brothers and sisters, we are honored that like Mary, we too are highly favored. We give thanks that Mary, like Mary, we have been chosen to give birth to Christ into our world. And tonight we offer praise that we might have found some healing and hope in the midst of our hurting and broken lives so as to be able to affirm that it is indeed through those very lives that we are called to make the invisible visible and the divine manifest to others in and through our frail humanity. And finally, on this feast day of our patroness, Our Lady of the Snows, we pray, O Mary, Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in your mercy, hear and intercede for us. And Blessed Mother, help us to become more like you when we grow up. Amen.